Um, uh, so we're live. We're on lecture five. Um, so a couple of housekeeping items. Um, first off, at, right before class started, uh, there was the, the topic brought up of not being able to review the responses for the quizzes. I'm going to check that here in a bit. The, the intention was is that after a quiz closes, you'll be able to review the responses. So you should be able to review the responses for quiz three. And as for quiz four, those responses should be available now. But if for some reason they're not, uh, which I, I'm getting the feeling they're not, uh, I'm going to check that after class uh, and, and see what's going on. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, homework five, which is going to be your dynamics quiz. That's going to be uploaded later today. I didn't have a chance to upload that before class started. Uh, so that'll be a little bit later today, but that'll again close Wednesday at noon. Um, now, let's uh, let's talk about a couple of other things uh, before we get into what we're doing in here. First off, um, I just wanted to mention, in case anybody is interested in graduate school, uh, the National Science Foundation's Graduate Research Fellowship Program, uh, they're accepting applications for graduate research fellowships, and that closes uh, in uh, here soon. If anybody interested in that, uh, you can talk to me. You can also talk to Dr. Yoon. Uh, the two of us, we uh, are we're available if you all are interested uh, in, in looking into that. Um, okay, let's talk about um, where we're at in here and, and moving forward. So here was our preference poll, and uh, I wanted to sort of open it up for a few minutes of discussion to see what everybody's thoughts were moving forward now that we've had a couple of weeks of FE exam review under our belts. Um, we're only going to do one week of dynamics because, I mean, you're going to see, I mean, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. You can open up the, um, the uh, you know, the, the, the design guides that are, or, sorry, the, the study guides that are available uh, uh, for purchase from, from companies you know, publish uh, uh, material for the exam. You can open up the sample uh, exams that NCES puts out themselves. They're going to find that the dynamics not that difficult. I think that um, a lot of times engineering students hear the word dynamics and it begins instead of acute post-traumatic stress disorder. But you're going to find that it's ac it's actually not bad. It's pretty straightforward. Stuff. And to give you an idea, some of the questions that we're going to do today are considered the hard ones, uh, and they're, pr they're pretty simple. Um, I wanted to see. You know, here's our preference poll, and I've got here that you all want to do land surveying or geomatics next week, and then, you know, so on and so forth. I wanted to see if this is still, now that we've had a few weeks under their belt, is this still like the order that you all are wanting to go in? Do you have any suggestions, any thoughts? I mean, I'm opening up to discussion. You could turn your mics on. I want to hear what your thoughts are on, you know, moving forward. Yes. Um, so right now we're starting the dynamics and then the surveying stuff, right? Sorry, what? I'm trying what? to take my stuff. Today we're doing dynamics. Yeah, but I'm trying my best to answer. My questions are not exactly forthcoming as usual. But is it possible eventually we take a look at what a sample exam of the FE would look like like a 2012 version of it or not well th that's possible but what we're doing like those quizzes that we're doing online those are essentially snippets of the exam just for each topic um, the time limit given on those uh, problems is probably comparable to what you get on the exam it's sometimes difficult because uh, some problems need more work than others, um, but that that's that's something that we might want to look at later. But again, most of what you're on the quizzes is pretty much coming directly from the type of problems you would get on the exam. Um, but let me let me make sure I, I get everybody's opinion. Farrah, you had something you want to say? I kind of want to start doing topics that have the most questions on the FE. That's a fair point. I mean, deformable, um, deformable has way more questions on it than dynamics, which is why we are doing more 
uh, uh, well, we did two weeks of deformables and one week of dynamics. Um, the uh, the other aspect, the reason why I put so much emphasis on deformable is because it affects, you know, structures, geotech, it affects other disciplines. It's kind of like statics. Like if you don't understand statics, you're going to have a hard time with structures and fluids and geotech and, and a lot of other topics. Um, as for the topics that have the most questions on the exam, um, let me pull up the, uh, give me a sec. I don't want to make any decisions today. I want I want input from everybody. That's just something to keep in mind. Um, and so, I mean, I, I, I want other people to speak out too. Give me one second. All right, so let me share the... Okay, so here's the exam spec. So if we go off of uh, that point, I mean, uh, math is a big one. Uh, statics is a big one. Uh, so for instance, if you compare statics to dynamics, statics just has a lot more than, than dynamics. Um, mechanics and materials, again, it has a fairly a big big topic on the exam, but there's just, um, there's, uh, there's there, it affects so many other things. Um, as for your big topics on the exam, the ones that really do have the most, you're talking about water resources and environmental, you're talking about structures, geotech, and uh, uh, those are really the three big ones. Transportation's pretty pretty weighty. Uh, construction's not as bad. Um, as for um, what ones you want to rank as to which ones you want to cover first, I'm probably going to encourage either somebody else to chime in or maybe we'll entertain some discussion on teams. So, uh, But is there any other opinions? I mean, I, again, I don't want it to just be... Um, you know, a couple students. Do we need to review time management for the FE exam? I always feel rushed when doing the quiz. Uh, it's a fair point. I mean, um, here would be sort of my way of, uh, of looking at it. So the quiz has, the, the test itself, uh, let's look at it like this. Okay, so the test itself has 110 questions. Okay, and uh, it says you have six hours to complete it, but that's, a little misleading because there are some tutorials and some other stuff. In fact, it even says that. And so I believe the actual time is something like five hours, 25 minutes, something like that. So let's let's just break out a calculator real quick. So let's say five hours, 20 minutes. So five times 60 plus 20, that's 320 minutes uh, divided by 110 questions. So you're looking at about three minutes a question, okay? And what we've been doing on uh, the exam is we've been doing um, uh, uh, five question quizzes and we've been doing them for 20 minutes. So it's a little bit more time, but I'll, I'll admit that the questions on the quizzes are of moderate to somewhat high difficulty. Like they're kind of tricky questions and I'll, I'll be the first person to admit that. Um, before we get into the dynamics uh, portion of the test. Let me say a couple other things about test strategy, and this is just coming from me. This is just m my personal opinions. Um, and then, again, if anybody has anything else, I, I want to uh, open it up for that. When I take the when I took the exam, and this is pretty much true for the FE and the PE, uh, what I did was uh, I started out by just opening the exam and taking it one problem at a time. And I would look at the problem, and if I, like, immediately knew how to do it, you know, like, there's a problem, it's like, what's the derivative of x squared? Oh, I'm just going to do that, answer it, and move on. And so I went through, you know, the first part of the exam, sort of like that. And if it was a problem where, oh, I'm going to need to look up a formula, or I'm, I'm going to need to think about that one a bit, I would just sort of gloss past it. And so my first run through the exam, I just quickly did the problems that I knew I could just knock out. Um, and I probably got like 40 to 50% of the exam done just by doing that. And then once I was finished with that, I said, okay, I'm going to take now each topic one at a time and I'm going to rank it 
by the topics that I'm really good at. So for me, like I was really good at statics. I wasn't so great at circuits and magnetism. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm civil engineer. So I, I put the circuits and magnetism problems off at the very, very end. Um, uh, and part of that was kind of an endurance thing. I mean, my exam was eight hours long. So the morning session and the afternoon session were four hours a piece. After I'd been sitting there for like three and a half hours, I was tired, you know, and I'm thinking if I'm going to be tired, I'd rather be tired on the problems that I'm probably going to be guessing at anyways than, than the ones that I know I'm really good at. So that, that would just be, that's my, that's how I did the exam. It worked out for me. I passed both of them. Uh, but, you know, everybody got kind of has to find also, you know, their own little uh, uh, tips and tricks that works for them. Uh, any other uh, feedback or suggestions uh, for topics before we um, move into dynamics? Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. Oh, hold on. Okay. All right. Here's how we're going to do this. Um, let me stop the share. Uh, I am going to do, so first off, you know, we only have 50 minutes and we can't, you know, do a ton of dynamics problems. So what I've done is I've picked three problems that are pretty representative of, of topics that you would get on the exam. And they're also pretty representative on the, the level of difficulty. I think you'd be surprised uh, about how straightforward some of this stuff is. So let's share just the screen because I'm not going to go forth on the slides this time. Uh, share entire screen. Okay. All right. So we have three examples, and I'm going to just start getting right into it. And, and I have found on this topic of the exam, and, and maybe it's this topic of the exam that, it, it's th that what I'm about to say is probably the, the most critical. But if you understand the fundamentals, um, you're going to be okay. You're going to be fine on this exam. And, and let me clarify that statement. So for those of you that took concrete design, okay? Um, you'll remember that one of the formulas that we used a lot was WL squared over eight. Now, that was a shortcut, okay? That was a shortcut for drawing the shear diagram and drawing the moment diagram outright because we dealt with that loading case very, very easy. And so if you remember that shortcut, you're a step ahead, but you don't have to have it. You know, you could draw the shear and moment diagram. It'll just take you a while. Um, so in those sciences, I would say, that understanding the shortcuts and the little tips and tricks are really important. In dynamics, if you understand the fundamentals, you can most likely muddle your way through most of the problems that you would deal with. And this is, like I said, pretty straightforward stuff. So I have a, a, a basic kinematics type problem here. Kinematics is, you know, one of the first topics that you get on the exam. Uh, so let's just get right into it. So we have a particle that is starting from rest. Uh, it experiences an acceleration of three meters per second for a period of two seconds. Uh, then the particle is returned to rest uh, in an additional distance of eight meters. Uh, so assuming that all of the accelerations were uniform, what was the total elapsed uh, uh, time for the particle's motion? So the way I uh, interpret this is I have two actions. So action one, which we'll say action one is, um, we'll say speeding up. and then action two, slowing down. Now, let's take a look at action one, okay? What do we know about this scenario, okay? Well, we know the particle started from rest and it experienced an acceleration of three meters per second for a period of two seconds, okay? So let's go back to physics land, okay? Remember in physics, you know, when you're talking about particle motion, you have an initial velocity, a final velocity. There's also, you know, acceleration and change in time. And the reason why I mention these variables is because remember, 
acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over the change in time, or you know, velocity final minus velocity initial over some period of time. Okay, now what do we know here? Well, um, we know that the acceleration is three meters per second squared, and we know that this happened over a period of two seconds. Now, without doing any math, do we know one of these values? Uh, somebody raise their hand. Uh, yes. If we multiply the three meters per second by the two seconds, that will give us our final velocity for the action one. Because That's true if what? That that's true only if what's I mean one of the one of these values you have to know in order to be able to make that statement. There we go. The initial velocity is zero. See what you're saying is true if the initial velocity is zero. If not, then it you're you are correct. Three meters per second over a period of two seconds that, that does yield six. But if I was initially traveling four meters per second, my final velocity isn't going to be six. It's going to be different than that. Does that make sense? Yes, but in this case, I am somewhat correct because we are starting off at zero, and now it's that. And that and that's what I, that's what I was getting at. I was trying to find out if there's one of these values that we know, and it's like yeah, we know the initial ve uh, velocity is zero. This is the one that we're trying to find out. And so you are correct. See, if I take this expression and I solve for the final velocity, I got that the final velocity is the initial velocity plus uh, AT. And the initial velocity is zero plus three meters per second squared times two seconds, which is six. You are correct. All right? Does that make sense? Yes. Now, there's a little bit more to figure out because we now need to talk about this second action. So let's, let's read this out. Let's see what we know. Okay, so we know that the particle returns to rest in an additional distance of eight meters. Okay, so during this second action, we need to make some, some conclusions. Okay. So action one, the particle starts at rest, and then it speeds up to a velocity of six meters per second. And then it slows down back to rest again. So during this second action, I propose that the initial velocity is six meters per second, and the final velocity is now zero. Okay, now here's the thing. We don't know the rate of uh, deceleration, we don't know how long that takes, but we know something else. We know that that occurs over a distance of eight meters. Okay. And so what this means is that we're going to have to go back and dig into our uh, equations of kinematics. And there's uh, a couple of ways that we can, we can go about that. Um, first off, you know, you can jog and rebanks. Uh, or, you know, remember, you can always use the FE reference manual. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you these equations are in there. Um, you just have to do a little bit of digging. Uh, but let's see if you all remember this. Do you remember, okay, so we have this expression. Anybody remember this one from probably either physics or dynamics? Anybody remember that? that the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus 2ax. Yeah, I remember that one. Now, 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 why am I bringing that one up? Well, what do I know from action two? I know the final velocity. I know the uh, initial velocity. I know x. I can use this expression to solve for a. I can solve for what is the rate of deceleration. And so the rate of deceleration is then going to be a equals vf squared so maybe maybe i should draw like a oh maybe i should draw like a big horizontal line through this so that i don't mix up my vfs and my vis vf squared minus uh vi squared that's a square i don't know what happened there uh squared over 2x 
And so what do we have? Zero meters per second squared minus six meters per second squared over two eight meters. So what do we get for A? Uh, negative 0 0.375 uh, meters over second squared, if I did my math right. Uh, you might want, uh, did you square your velocities? No, I, didn't, I did not. Hold it there. 16. Okay. If I did, if I did this right, then it's negative 2.25 meters per second squared. All right. All right. Did anybody else get that? There we go. Yeah, and, and the key point is that where it's it's negative, that makes sense because it's decelerating. It's slowing down, okay? Now, so now that I know A, I could probably then say that if I use this equation here, I could solve for T. Therefore, T is... VF minus VI over A, just flip the T's and the A's. And so I get zero meters per second time, or minus, come on, minus six meters per second over negative 2.25. And that makes sense because you're going to have a negative on the top, negative on the bottom, and so you're going to get a positive number. So what do we get for T? Well, first off, time can't be negative. It's impossible. And I got... What? Well, checks your math, yeah. But I, for my answer, and, you know, and it should be 2.67 seconds. But it can't be A for Two our answer. Sorry. Okay, so you got 2.67 seconds here. Uh, let's, let's take it one step at a time. Did anybody else get this? Yeah. Yes. Uh, did somebody raise their hand? Uh, hold on. Uh, hold on. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So we got 2.67 seconds here. Now, what you're saying is the answer is not A. Why, uh, why are you saying that? Because it's asking for the total time it'll last for the particle motion. We only saw, we already initially know action one, the speeding up. We already knew that. We just found out the other action, the other half of the you're, total motion. You're right. So this is the time for action two, but this right here is the time for action one. So the total amount of time is 4.67 seconds. So it's C. You're exactly right. All right. Does that make sense? Does anybody else have any questions on that? All right. Okay, let's move on to the next question. All right, so this, if the last problem was an algebra-based problem, this one's a calculus-based problem. But I don't want that to scare you um, uh, into thinking that, oh, now it's impossible. Um, so here we have uh, a mass that weighs 550 kilograms, and it is initially at rest, and it is acted upon by a force, and the force is expressed by a function. So the force is... F D, or 50 times uh, e to the t. So F equals 50 times e to the t. So as time increases, the force changes and the force increases. So the question becomes, what is the displacement at a time of t equals four seconds, okay? And so this is where your calculus skills uh, are, are gonna come into play, okay? Uh, but fortunately, the function is pretty simple. One of the things that you'll find in this type of test is that if you're having to do any differentiation or integration in other topics, 
So it's one thing if you're in the math section and the test says, okay, what is the integral of the tangent squared or something like that, then okay, that problem is only asking about the integral, so it's going to get maybe a little deeper into calculus land. Um, but when we're in dynamics or we're in structures or fluids or whatever, if you have to do integration, it tends to, or derivatives or integrals, it tends to not be super, super complicated, okay? So let's, uh, let's write some things out. So we have F is 50 times e to the t, okay? And we know that our mass is 150, okay? Because everything's in pretty standard units. We've got the mass in kilograms. Uh, we've got the force in newtons. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize that acceleration is force divided by mass. And so acceleration is going to be 50 e to the t over 550 which is going to be 1 over 11 e to the t. Okay, and that should be pretty straightforward. So, I mean, we're just using force equals mass times acceleration on that. Okay, so that's, you know, our first, you know, basic expression that we're using, Newton's second law. Okay, so now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this acceleration and we're going to have to see if we can figure out displacement, okay? Now, how do we do that? Well, let's go back to some calculus land, okay? So acceleration. Can we relate acceleration to displacement in calculus land? Well, I know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And I know that velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. So that means, you know, we have this going on. So if I've got that, then maybe what I ought to do is integrate, okay? So I propose that the velocity as a function of time is the integral of the acceleration, which is the integral of 1 over 11 e to the t dt. Okay, so what is that? Well, let's see. First off, I can always factor out the constant. And what is the integral of e to the t? It's e to the t. Now, am I done? Or am I forgetting something? There we go, plus C. Now, this, you're exactly right, plus C. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this C1. And the reason why I'm going to call it C1 is because I'm, if I'm trying to determine position, I'm going to have to integrate again. And integrating again is going to yield a, another arbitrary constant of integration. So we'll call that one C2. Um, but before I do that, um, let's see if maybe I can solve for C1. Now, Let's go back to mathematics land and, and calculus land and all that. So whenever you integrate, uh, whenever you indefinitely integrate, you get an arbitrary constant of integration. Now, in order to solve for that constant of integration, we need a boundary condition or an initial condition. And I'll call it initial condition since we're talking about uh, as a function of time. Okay. So what do we know about this particle? We know that the mass, which weighs 550 kilograms, was at rest. So I propose that um, at time equals zero, the velocity equals zero. So what does that mean? So we have V equals one over 11 E to the T plus C1. So zero equals one over 11 E to the zero plus C1. 
So zero equals one over 11 times what? What is e to the zero? Like what's anything raised to the zero power? One. So this is one plus C1. So therefore, C1 is minus one elevenths. And V over T is now one over 11 E to the T minus one over 11. So if we wanted to find the velocity at some time, we would just plug in the time into that equation and plug and chug. But that's not what we're after. We're after the position at a certain point in time. So what does that mean? We need to do this again. So we need to say that the position at some point in time is the integral of the velocity, which is the integral of 1 over 11 e to the t minus 1 over 11 dt. Okay, so what do we get? All right, well, the integral of, so this first term, we factor out the 1 over 11, the integral of e to the t is e to the t minus, okay, what about here? What is the integral of a number? The integral of a number is the number times the variable, like, so this is going to be 1 over 11 times t, right? Because the derivative of 1 over 11 times t is just 1 over 11. And then don't forget our arbitrary constant of integration. Okay. And so now we, oh, goodness. Sorry about that. So now we have our next uh, boundary condition. So at t equals zero, we have x equals zero because again, the particle is initially at rest. So that means it has zero velocity and zero position. Um, now here's the thing. If you wanted, you could say that its initial position is some, you know, x naught. Uh, but you're going to have x naught at t equals zero and x naught, or you're going to have x at t equals zero, <coughs> x at t equals four, and then just take the difference of those to get the displacement and they'll, they'll cancel. So we might as well just go ahead and say it in zero. <clears throat> so what do we have? x equals one over 11 e to the t minus one over 11 t plus c2. 0 equals 1 over 11 e to the 0 minus 1 over 11 times 0 plus c2. So e to the 0 is 1 minus 0 plus c2. c2 is also minus 1 over 11. Or, if you wanted to write this maybe a little neater, you could say 1 over 11 times e to the t minus t minus 1. You could do that too. That, that'd be fine. And remember, let me move this down. Remember our goal is to determine the displacement at t equals 4. So 1 over 11 e to the 4 minus 1 over 11 times 4 minus 1 over 11. So what is x at 4? I'm going to need your help. Okay,
4.51. Okay. Let's take a sec. Does anybody have any questions on this? Is this, I mean, in all, like, this is the type of stuff that you'll get on the exam in dynamics. Nothing, you know, I mean, outside the, the realm of, of possibility. Okay. All right. Let's talk about our third example. And then, I, like I said, I had more, but um, we just we don't really have a lot of time uh, to do too much um, with, with just 50 minutes. So I, it's like, let's do the ones that I think are the most important. And so I kind of like this one because it uses some of those conservation principles that you uh, learn about in, uh, in physics. And what we'll use here is the law of conservation of momentum, okay? So does anybody remember how to compute momentum? Remember how to do that? Like mass times acceleration, that's force, you know, uh, force times distance. Uh, there you go, exactly, mass times velocity, that is momentum. Okay, so let's, let's uh, determine this. So we have a two kilogram ball of clay that's moving at 40 meters per second. That's a fast ball of clay. Uh, and it is colliding with a five uh, kilometer, or kilogram ball of clay moving directly towards the first ball with a velocity of 10 meters per second. What is the final velocity if both balls stick together after the collision? So here's how I'm going to do this. Let's call this ball one moving this way and ball two moving that way. Okay, so ball one has a, a mass of two kilograms, two kilograms, and it is moving with a velocity of 40 meters per second. So therefore, its momentum is 80. Okay, ball two has a mass of five kilograms. Now its velocity is um, 10 meters per second, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that velocity is negative because they're, they're colliding with one another. So they're traveling in opposite directions. And I can't say that the mass is negative. Like, you know, mass is just a number. So the, the, both of those are positive. So I gotta take one velocity as positive and one velocity as negative. So I'll just pick one and take the second one to be negative. And so therefore, MV2 is uh, minus 50 kilograms times meters per second. Okay, so if I have mass one having a momentum of 80 and or uh, mass two having a momentum of minus 50, therefore the initial initial momentum is 30 kilograms times meters per second. Well, here's the thing, law of conservation of momentum, this also equals the final momentum. Now, why does that matter? Well, let's go back to what the problem states. The problem states that I have a two kilogram ball of clay and a five kilogram ball of clay colliding with one another. And uh, once they collide, the masses become, they're, they're together. So our final mass is M1 plus M2, seven kilograms. 
And so the question becomes, if I have a momentum of 30 and a total mass of 7, my final velocity is my final momentum divided by my final mass. All right, let's take a sec on and take a step back. What do you think? Um, what do you think on this? Is this bad? Is this hard? Is there anything that we've done that's too difficult or anything that, that you know, you didn't quite follow? I mean, that's what I want to hear. I mean, really, this is the type of stuff that you get in dynamics on the exam. Like, this is it in a nutshell. So, um, this this would be my suggestion, okay? Uh, on these uh, dynamics problems, again, if you can handle, you know, this type of stuff, and like I said, I'm going to give you a five-question quiz, and it'll probably be, like, you know, along these lines, kinematics, you know, work energy, this type of stuff. Um, just... If you're good with that, law, you know, law of conservation of momentum, law of conservation of energy, this is the type of stuff that we're dealing with. Um, and I want to, before we close it today, because, um, I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty much wrapping it up on, on the, the dynamics review, I do want to go back to the discussion that we had at the beginning about what to cover in the future. What I'm going to do after this is uh, I'm going to do two things for the class. I'm going to post the dynamics quiz, uh, but then I'm also going to open up a discussion thread on... Uh, the senior seminar uh, Microsoft Teams, and I want to get everybody's opinion as to what you want to cover next, because there were some good, really good things to talk about here. You know, in regards to time management, there was a comment about the um, a comment about the the covering the topics that have the most questions. So I want everybody to chew on that for a bit. You know, think about it, and then I want I want to hear some some uh, some discussion on Teams about what you want to cover, and um, probably what I'll do is like on Monday. I'll go back and look at what everybody said and said, okay, this is what um, this is what we're going to do next week. Uh, but yeah, I really want to get people's feedback. I mean, the, the way I look at it is this: this is your class, this is your review session. Get your money's worth. What do you want to cover? And that's what we're going to cover. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have for uh, for the review today. Um, like I said, we could probably try and do one more problem, but we'd be rushing it. So, and I'd rather cover cover the topic well. So, but it's also a very small topic, so I don't think it merits too much of our time. So, any other questions? All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and hop on off. I'll have the quiz uh, posted soon, uh, and I'll have a discussion thread starting on Teams. So, with that, hope everybody has a great week, and we will see you all next Wednesday.